All right, you want to know how to network with powerful people, millionaires, billionaires, uh, you know, celebrities, whoever it might be. Um, I thought I'd record a little video. That's one of the most common questions I get. So I just set up here in my backyard. Very sunny day, so hopefully if you see me sweating, uh, I hope I won't sweat too much. But, um, you know, I call it creating your inner circle. Everybody needs an inner circle that's trying to do something big in life. And uh, I one time, I, I recorded a video, I don't know if you've seen it, it's this long list of the inner circle that people created, like Steve Jobs had one, Bill Gates had one, Mahatma Gandhi had one, Martin Luther King Jr. had one. Uh, basically, if you look at the very few people who changed the world. I was reading um, Peter, Peter Diamandis' book today, for the book of the day, it's called Bold, and he says, you know, only 99, 99.999999% uh, of the world uh, is working on something that's not, you know, a game changer. So if you want to be different and uh, be a ga game changer in terms of making a hell of a lot more money, um, you know, some of you starting a charity, being artists, starting a new entrepreneurial venture, you must know how to create this inner circle. You have to know how to network with powerful people. And it's something, I've tried everything, I've experimented, um, and you know, some of you have seen the good results of some of the experimentations I've, I've done. If you follow me on Instagram recently, you've seen you know, me with Arnold Schwarzenegger, me with uh, Elon Musk, uh, you know, me with, uh, the other day I was with, hanging out with Dwight Schrute, uh, Rain Wilson, Dwight Schrute, that's his character he plays in The Office. All these people, and, and, and you know, I don't like to name drop, that's not the point of what I'm saying. The point is these people, if you do it right, can become part of your inner circle. Sometimes, now, what's the difference between mentors and inner circle? Mentors like one person. If you put a whole bunch of mentors together, if you put a whole bunch of people who are your allies, your board of advisors, that's what I call the inner circle. And it, it's, um, it's simple. I'm going to give you the simple formula, but it, it, it's simply elegant what you have to do. So I'll give you a few tips. Um, I'm actually going to do a longer talk. I'm trying to keep these videos and talks around 18 minutes because you've seen maybe seen my... TEDx talk, TEDx says, you know, the ideal attention span for a human is 18 minutes. By the way, that's one of the tips to networking. Sometimes uh, if you want to network with millionaires, billionaires, and powerful people, you can't be too long-winded. Um, you can be long-winded at certain times, but at the initial stage, you have to peak interest very fast. So let me, uh, I'm going to write a few things here. And by the way, th that was kind of one of them. So, all right, so the first thing here that I would say you have to have, um, there's a lot of different names for them. You know, people call them elevators, pitches. Uh, people you hear in Silicon Valley, you know, it's a pitch deck and a one line, I've called them different things, one line, des uh, a destiny hook, you know, a one line explanation. What I tend to call it now um, is interu an interruption hook, you know? So, sorry, here, my handwriting's not good. So an interruption hook. So if you want to network with powerful people, remember this. Like, I'll give you an example from recently. Um, I was with Arnold Schwarzenegger, got to hang out with him. Y you got to use an interruption hook on him. Why? Because everybody wants Arnold Schwarzenegger's attention. When I was with Elon Musk, same thing. Those people are hard to talk to. Elon Musk is, you know, has $13 billion dollars He's not gonna talk to anybody that he doesn't have to. In fact, you know, this is my house in Beverly Hills. If you notice how all these houses are built in Beverly Hills, okay, walls all the way around them. This is one acre in Beverly Hills. You know, it's a big house. It's a, the, the people who built this house before I, you know, got it, they wanted separation creation. That's what these walls are. You know, there's 56 doors in this house, there's gates. That's all separating themselves because most people, okay, if you don't use an interruption hook on them, they know everybody wants something from them. Celebrities, everybody wants something from them. So this wall gets created and when I was sleeping on a couch and I had no money, you know, I had 47 bucks in my bank account, didn't have a car, college degree, all that stuff, um, I was over here and I wanted to get access. Everybody wants people to invest in them, people to give them advice, people to make connections and go, oh, meet my lawyer friend. Oh, meet my, you know, meet my, the guy who invested in me. That's the kind of access that you and I want when we're over here. And so this wall though, 
This interruption, you can also think of it, a good visual, it's like a piece of dynamite, you know, like a stick of dynamite. So you add a stick of dynamite here, you light it, and, sh and boom, you punch a hole through the barrier. And what people don't realize is, and what most people do, is they just bang their head against the wall. And eventually, you bang your head against the wall long enough, you're going to be brain dead. So, for example, people go, Ty, I'm going to this networking event. Well, networking events sometimes are good, sometimes are horrible. A lot of times, networking events you go to are just everybody who's at the same level all networking with each other, which there is a certain value to that. But you still haven't broken through the wall to the people who really have the access that you need if you want to do something uh, you know, big in life. So interruption hooks. Um, it's a whole conversation. I'm going to give one here in a couple days. I'm going to do a talk. Um, I'm going to put a link down here if you want to see a full talk on this. Uh, I'm five or six minutes in, so I want to keep, I got three things I want to give you now. If you want to hear all of them, click the link, it's free. You can listen in on my full talk. But here's, the, just I'll give you some concrete examples of interruption hooks that are duds. They don't work. You light the dynamite and no, create, no hole is created to get past this wall of separation. For example, you say to somebody, you go, uh, Hey, I want to tell you my business idea. Oh, holy shit. Let me tell you what that does, because I get that a lot. I get that hundreds of times a day. It makes me want to retreat further back. Um, you go to, let's say you're an actor, an actress, or a writer. You go, ooh, I want you to read my script. Holy shit, these people are dis... The people that you need to read your script, first of all, uh, the, the louder you say that, the faster they run. So what you have to do is you have to, and this is number two, okay, that I'm going to get to today. Um, you have to, and this is a little more advanced, okay? So I'll give you the, if you're an academic and you like intellectual stuff, I'll give you a, a little more intellectual, you know, I call this ontological, sorry. Sorry. All right. So ontology. You may have studied this. Okay. Ontology. There we go. Okay. So the ontological story in people's head. So philosophers would use this word if you want to, I remember it in just simple terms, story in the head. So all humans, every one of them are continually running a movie theater projection in their memories, in their consciousness, okay? So for example, that's why, for example, two people can be born in the ghetto and one person rises out of it and their identical twin doesn't. Why? Because one person played a story out in their head, for example, that they're stuck forever and the other person plays a story out that, no, I'm gonna take this bad hand that I was dealt and I'm gonna use it as fuel and motivation and they become the next Oprah Winfrey or whatever, right? So. In the same way, whoever you're trying to reach, millionaires, billionaires, celebrities, powerful people, um, they have a story in their head. And if you try to push your story on their story, they retreat behind the wall. So going back to this dynamite, this exploding, this interruption hook, um, it has to align with the story already in their head. I'll give you an example, like real simple one. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay, what's a story? You, if you want to hang out with Arnold Schwarzenegger, talk to him. What's the story already in his head? Well, you do a little research. He loves cigars. Okay? So you connect with him. Instead of going, hey, Arnold, will you blankety blank, will you help me do this, that, and other, help me be a movie star like you were, that, he's going to retreat from that. You pop right in to the story that's in their head. You pop in right here. And then you participate in a story they were already playing. And what happens is, this is very subtle. Be, and you know, uh, Voltaire, the, frame, the famous French philosopher, he said, it's not enough to conquer, sometimes you have to seduce. So this is a seduction state that you're now operating in. Because the definition of sed seduction in this case is they were already gonna do it or they think 
they were already going to do it of their own volition, of their own choice. So if Arnold Schwarzenegger, you start talking about cigars, he probably was already thinking about cigars. So you will 10x the odds. Now, nothing always works, but if you understand ontology and the story inside people's head, this requires research. And I can tell you time after time, the other day I was, uh, two, a week or two ago, I was at a dinner with the CEO of Bugatti and it was also the CEO of Ferrari. And so that brings me to the third thing. How did I connect with a person like that? Well, uh, the third thing is that I call this, I, I developed this back a long time ago when I had no money and I was trying to make some money. Um, and I call it the phone speaker mute. Okay, so what you do, okay, you may have heard of this in other terms. Sometimes people call this, this is a shit pen. Why do we have this pen? Um, some people call this, there we go. Some people call this um, active li listening, but I feel like that's such a cliche word, I won't remember it. I always try to reframe phrases. So active listening, forget that. What I would do, I would, so one of my first businesses was in financial planning, okay? Investing, insurance, helping people plan. I worked for GE Capital, or GE Financials, biggest company in the world back then. And what I did was, I had a website, I gave people cool, I, I, it was like 12 secrets, that, and I had these cool little tips for people, and then people would fill out a form and ask me to call them, it was a lead generation business. So these people would call me, and instead of me cold calling people, now they were, call, they were requesting me to call them. So what I would do is get on the phone with them, and this is the exact line, if you wanna know a line that works like magic, assuming they ask to be called first, okay? So what you do is you get on the phone, and you go, hey, it's Ty, um, I got a little request that you wanted to talk to me. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what you're trying to do and I'll see if I can help. Now I'm gonna dissect that little phrase because it's more powerful than it seems. And then I would take the phone, put it on speaker and press simultaneously the mute button. And see that forced me then to go into the next stage, stage three, where I just listened because to get into the ontological story that exists in people's heads, you can't get into their head. It's not like you can get a little micro, you know, submarine and float through their brain. What was that movie like that? Honey, I Shrunk the Kids or something? Yeah, exactly. That You know, that, that's not reality. So the simplest way is I would just mute the phone. Then no matter, even if I caught myself trying to talk, it was already muted. So it was forced silence. So make it so that, that doesn't go off so I see that. All right. Um, the timer. So the saying that I gave, and maybe I'll break that down. Uh, let me see, how much time do I have left? Let me see. Oh, shit. My timer iPad overheated recording this. It's a hot day. You just look at the time on your phone. So, um, by the way, the reason I'm putting a timer is I'm trying to discipline myself to do, be able to pick the time, the strategy, how long I want my videos to be, and hit it. It's, it's a skill to be able to hit. It's a lot harder to to give seven minutes left? Okay. All right, so that little phrase that I gave, I'm gonna sh I'll break that down and then explain this. So the phrase was, first of all, I didn't sound like I was desperate. So I said to them, hey, I just got a request you wanted to talk to me. Okay, so that's number one. Never be desperate. I've talked about that in another video on how to win friends and influence people, okay? The second thing in that sentence is I say, why don't you, tell me how I can help you. Now, if you understand the 25 cognitive biases, I'm saying, let me help you. And everybody likes to be helped. You know, very few people don't like to be helped in one way or another. So instead of me saying, let me, I want you to be my customer. I want you to buy from me. I want you to help me. I want you to invest in me. Because we, I told you, those are the phrases that makes people run for the hills. Or in this case, run behind the walls. Okay, so I, I flipped it. And then lastly, I, it, I, used, I made it like not formal. And so maybe I'll give you guys a bonus one here. Um, and of course I muted the phone. The fourth thing, you, you have to allow personality to flow. So what happens is, um, you know, People think they get intimidated. They, they, they'll say you're sitting in front of an investor or something. 
or a potential mentor and or they're a billionaire or a millionaire you all of a sudden you start altering your normal behavior and so the reason when i was back then years ago when i was getting on the phone with people and earning money the hard way cold calling or in this case warm calling uh, i just said stuff like you know hey you know i use hey that's not that formal because that's how i actually talk if you start getting on the phone and go hello this is ty lopez i received an inquiry from you and I would be interested in seeing if I can solve your current problems. Would you mind giving me a moment of your time? Like that, you gotta kill that. And I'm overdoing it a little bit, but almost always when people come to me, I see an altering in their, um, in their personality and it makes me uncomfortable. So people can tell when you're not being yourself. Now, you can take this a little bit too far and be too informal and be like ridiculous, you know? Don't be insanely ridiculous. We're gonna grab the camera and walk through. Can we walk? So I'll take you guys at the end on a little house tour. People are always asking me to do that. So um, let, let's talk and, and walk a little bit. So if the, if the lighting gets a little bad. So when you allow your natural personality to come out, okay? This, by the way, this is the pool. Got some cabanas here. I'm reupholstering some of them. This, by the way, back here, this is the guest house, so I got a gym and stuff. Gym, jujitsu upstairs, guest house. There's a 16-person movie theater. That's pretty cool. There's a um, pool table. I'll do another, like, uh, full tour. We've got back here a garden and a full-court basketball and tennis, which is pretty sweet. I like, I love basketball. Um, but anyway, so you're penetrating through the barrier getting into the real story how by being informal by using this dynamite approach I got a little power squat rack that we're setting up um, and I'll maybe we'll let go into the house so uh, then I'm not altering my personality too much okay now I might alter my personality a bit like if you meet somebody you need to have a level of respect Okay, that's important. Got a cactus garden here. Uh, so, and also, by the way, a little side note, you'll see some people working over there. I've got about, I've got an office about a few miles from here. I try to keep everything within two miles. So I got 50, 60 people working over there, but every day I have some of them come work at my house so I can work closer uh, with them. So today we've got some guys from the, the traffic and marketing team here. Wait, rave, wave your hand. We've got over here is the uh, outside dining, I mean, uh, bar, and we're getting ready to do a, a shoot. Is he on the call? Oh, by the way, let me not forget. So if you want to see the full deal, I'm going to give a full talk on how to network with powerful people. There should be a link right below here or above. Click it. It's completely free, and these things are filling up. I've been doing these free talks. Um, you click the button, it'll tell you the exact time. We'll translate it into your time zone. So you, I got people in 40 countries. All you got to do, have your phone or be at your computer. But if you're traveling, you can do it on your phone and just listen in. Make sure you have watched this whole video. Of course, if you're hearing this, you have. And then uh, just show up. I, they're anywhere from like, it uh, depends. It's live, so you can ask me questions. And I'm going to get deep. There's a lot more here. Trust me, it's an art and a science and some people are good at it and it's huge in their life and some people suck and they're always held back by not being able to connect with people. So click the link here and grab your spot. They've literally been filling up, so um, it's important. I'll, I'll walk in the house. I won't go through, the, this is an 18 bathroom, 17 bedroom house, so I'm not gonna walk through everywhere. But uh, I'll show you the downstairs here. I got a fish pond in the living room, which is pretty cool. I'll be, I'll be there in one minute. Ignore the boxes. Uh, so over here we got the uh, got the living room, the foyer. We got the fish, the fish pond. It automatically feeds them at night. And then uh, got an art collection. Then you got the Scarface. Come film this way. This is the door. So it's kind of cool if you've ever seen Scarface. Good old. I got to I got to see Al Pacino the other day. He was he was so, and you got the 
say hello to my little friend room. So anyway, I'll show you guys more later. There's an elevator in the house, maid's quarters, all that good stuff. But remember, even though people see me like this, man, I've been down in the dirt. I've been broke. I've been more than broke. I lived five years with an outhouse on a farm, no electricity. Uh, you know, I was sleeping in a mo I lived in a mobile home for years. So, you know, I haven't lost touch with reality. That's why I do these videos. So it's, not, it's not to show off, but it's a good reminder that, you know, I was born in Long Beach, man. I was born in the ghetto, if you've seen straight out of Compton. And you can rise up out of stuff. Not everybody needs to have this stuff. And, you know, maybe I won't have this stuff for the rest of my life. What I care about is momentum and doing big things, change the world. So click the link above and below, and uh, I'll see you on the live talk. All right? Talk to you soon.